Okay, okay guys, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is sitting pretty right, right now, $5,700. $5, if we follow the trend that Bitcoin follows, it's going to hit up past 6000 maybe even almost reaching 7000 before it takes a big dip again. Maybe it'll uh, get down 5000 or just above and sit there for a month or two and then do the cycle again. We have Ether finally up. We have Ripple, it's been up um, because of the, the SWAL conference that's going on in a couple of days here, in the middle of October in Toronto. Um, bankers, um, industry leaders, financial, marketing, all types of people are gonna be there speaking about implementing blockchain into banking. Ripple has over a hundred uh, customers signed at this point and here in Canada they have about three out of four of our big banks signed already so they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing and this is a real legit company and a good long-term investment um, but again short-term investment I would pick Bitcoin it's your most secure choice um, your chances of losing are very slim uh, Monero is something I bought a long time ago when I was sitting at $8, I bought a bunch up and I knew it was going to um, get to this price, so I sold a um, good amount of mine so far, I sold a lot of my Litecoin, I couldn't wait, I got impatient, I couldn't wait for it to rise, I was sitting at $50 for a long time and I had to sell some to fund some Bitcoin. Um, Dash, I sold some, I didn't get on that one quite in time, uh, kind of came out of nowhere and hit on to 100 and that's when I bought bought it up when I was sitting at $100. Um, Ether I bought back when it was um, $8, Litecoin $5, and uh, so yeah, NEO is something I would buy up and BitConnect. Um, I currently bought a bunch of OMG as well, so those are my picks, and um, some of these bigger ones, they're good, um, good secure investments, but uh, to make a big return, I'd say NEO is your new, newest one of what these ones used to be when they were this price, and it's going probably the same direction as Ethereum. So, moving on. Then we have this story, which is a beautiful story from the Bitcoin community. And one of the few good stories, because we need as, as much good reputation as we can right now, because Bitcoin has lots of bad reputation naturally. So, um, these type of things are what I'd love to see happen, and I would love to start something like this. Uh, or fun stuff like this myself. So this talks about a forest that people funded and bought with Bitcoin to help feed and house homeless people. So it's basically a campground where homeless people can go and sleep and get a free meal. And it's been all funded with Bitcoin. Except for one thing. They've had a lot of resistance by their government. And let's read a little bit here. It has been popu a popular charity among Bitcoin prop proponents. The organization has provided over 167,000 meals to those in need. And all of it has been paid for with Bitcoin. The organization was created to help with the growing Penascola homeless population by providing them free meals and a safe place to live. However, two years ago, county officials and a few neighbors threatened Sean's outpost residents with evictions, stating the land was not permitted to be a campground. It's sad that this stuff happens and any time someone tries to do something good, I guess the darkness um, doesn't go away easily, but it does go away 
when you do not back down. And these people showed that. So the place is called Sean's Outpost Home Cell Reach. And um, I guess it's in Florida. For close to two years, it seemed county officials were to evict Sean's Outpost residents. But uh, the charity even faced hefty fines for code violations. However, Bitcoin.com, they told Bitcoin.com that they had won the appeal and Sean Velpost is very pleased with the latest judgment. So they finally won. Here's a picture of residents living at, they call it the Satoshi Forest. We have always felt that we never needed a government permission, permit to help people in our community, which is so true. But we did our homework before purchasing the property and knew that it was authorized to use inside of the county's land development code. We think the judge saw that the county was throwing everything they could to try and prevent us from moving forward based upon how unpopular the use is from a political standpoint. We have existed since 2013 with little to no problems showing that we are a good working model. We have assisted numerous people back to housing by giving them a space that is safe to decompress and empower themselves to get back on their feet. We have done all this with the support and assistance of the Bitcoin community, solidarity. And I've seen stories where people, uh, squatters, are not allowed to go in a forest and pitch a tent. And people that don't have a, a place to live are not allowed to take natural land that is given to us. It seems the government wants to own everything and they want you to suffer. So when people do this kind of thing and grow communities, we can grow communities decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer completely. Small communities need to start growing and showing the model of what the world could be and then people will start moving to that model and it will grow. And we have a chance to do this and be a part of this and start these things and be involved. Satoshi Forest lives on to provide a safe place for those in need. So we're gonna finish off this video talking about the fork coming up and this explains a little bit more in what the forks are, what the difference is between Bitcoin Gold in that fork and the BX2 or SegWit fork. Bitcoin Gold developers have stated that they might pre-mine a certain amount of Bitcoin Gold to fund their efforts. Also, when Bitcoin Cash was created, it had a certain degree of support from large miners, which is why it did so well. And after it became clear that Bitcoin Gold was here to stay, Initially, reluctant exchanges started supporting it and giving Bitcoin owners the Bitcoin hash coins they rightfully own. Bitcoin Gold doesn't have that kind of support and it's entirely possible that it just fizzles and dies right after inception. So this is why Bitcoin is going up because a lot of uncertainty and people are starting to see that it's not a big threat, these forks, and it's not going to um, replace Bitcoin. We've asked a few experts, and the consensus seems to boil down to one word, buzz. The Bitcoin Gold project is a miracle attempt at securing hash power with marketing, said Charles Hare, the CEO of Crypto Compare. After Bitcoin Cash's survival on exit, it seems as if taking Bitcoin's name is the new modus operandi for launching a new crypto and attempting to gleam some of its reputation onto the new creation. CEO of Coin. IRA doesn't see Bitcoin Gold going very far. It has a catchy name, but we don't see it gaining anywhere near the acceptance of a Bitcoin, he said. The other more dangerous fork in the road, potentially far more important event is happening on November 18th. Around that day, Segwit2x upgrade will be implemented. Again, splitting Bitcoin into two. The new version of Bitcoin should be safer and faster, and basically everyone in the Bitcoin community wants to see this upgrade happen. 
but there's a big disagreement on when and exactly how it should happen. A group of Bitcoin-related companies that represent more than 83% of mining power has declared to split it in November, whereas the Bitcoin core development team wants to wait until the full consensus is reached. But it's unclear how many miners will support the new version and how many will stick to the old one. As Bitcoin's market cap increases, the politics surrounding the cryptocurrency are getting uglier. The November upgrade could easily turn into a bloody battle for dominance over Bitcoin. What we've seen over the past few weeks and days that a lot of miners are pulling out of this uh, new consensus and this new uh, Bitcoin chain split. And so the old one is gaining momentum again and gaining strength and confidence. So those are the two Bitcoin forks. And here we have Bitcoin Magazine has a Bitcoin Beginner's Guide to Surviving in the Beagle and Segwit 2x forks. So it basically explains to you what you can do now before the forks. Uh, during the forks and after to make sure that you don't lose any money and you get um, your free uh, fork coins and free new coins that are created off of the current chain as long as you're holding Bitcoin. So if you want to see this article and read it, the link is in the description. And um, yeah, we'll leave that today with uh, the price of Bitcoin at Five seven twenty two, and ethers at three hundred and forty four dollars. We're sitting strong. Litecoin's at sixty three dollars, and the Ripple's at point two six. Monero's at ninety six dollars, and Dash is at three hundred and sixteen dollars. So, I'm Crypto Keith, and uh, have a nice day, and get yourself some more Bitcoin if you get a chance. Thank you.